This video is sponsored by Cadeco.com. Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here from Learn Create Play to walk you through the world of operators. But before we talk code, let's review where we are. When you started this course, you were probably new to C Sharp and possibly Unity. In that time, you created a small script to print messages on the screen. You started getting comfortable with your code editor, and you learned about variables and types. That's a lot, so give yourself a pat on the back. Coding is hard, and it takes time. This means you should really celebrate the small successes and be patient with yourself when it takes you a while to understand things. Now, as is, you know how to create variables. You can create variables for hit points and experience points. Yet, what happens when the player kills the boss? How do you increase the player's XP, or how do you increase their hit points when they take damage? Welcome to the world of operators. There's a whole bunch of them, but I'll just introduce you to some of the more common operators. To get started, we will start with the equal sign. In math, we use the equal sign to denote equality. In programming, it's known as the assignment operator. Let's take the following statement. Mathematically, the statement doesn't make much sense. A variable can never equal itself plus one. Instead, what is happening is that you are incrementing x plus one and then you are assigning the result of that increment back to x. There's a way to check for equality, but that will come in a later episode. For now, let's play around with operators. But before I do, here's a message from my sponsor, Kadeco.com. Kadeco is a site for developers made by developers. With hundreds of instructors from around the world, you can learn about topics such as native iOS development, native Android development, and even multi-platform development with Flutter. Kadeco also features hundreds of free articles, including topics on game development, covering both Unity and Unreal. As a pro subscriber, you can access a library of thousands of videos on a range of development topics. The curated learning paths are designed to teach the basics of development in a friendly and supportive way. Pro subscribers also have complete access to all the books at Kadeco, such as the Unity Apprentice, that aims to teach you Unity by creating a series of different games. Get started on your programming journey today by heading on over to Kadeco.com. Okay, we are going to start this demo by adding a little interactivity. To do this, we're going to add a button to our project. Let's get started by opening your project in progress. Select the Canvas Game object in the hierarchy and click the plus sign. Select UI and then Button Text Mesh Pro. Good work. Now arrange the button so that it is on the bottom of the screen. We're going to create a new script now. Call it My Operators. If you've been following this course, you should already be familiar with creating scripts. Open up the script and update it to the following. You've seen this before. It lets us write on the screen. Now let's write a little code to respond to button presses.
This is called a method. We'll be covering methods in later episodes. The key thing to note is all our code goes between the curly braces. Return back to the Unity editor. First, select the text and remove our Madlib script from it. Simply find it in the inspector, click the three dots, and select the Remove Component option. Next, drag our My Operator script to it. Excellent. Now for the button. Select the button and scroll down in the inspector until you see the button component. My button is named button1, so I'm just going to rename it for now. Now look in the inspector. At the very bottom is something marked on click. Click the plus sign beneath it. This provides some options. Don't worry about what they do. Simply drag the text game object to the bottom option. You'll see the drop down next to it brighten up. Click the drop down, then find My Operators. From the flyout menu, select the Display Message method. We've just told the button to call that method when the user clicks on it. That's all I'm going to say about this. Right now, you are getting used to working with Unity's user interface from a very high level. You'll have to trust me on this. We want to focus on C-sharp and not get lost in Unity, but we're doing lots of important practice. Think of Daniel-san from Karate Kid. I'm thinking of the 80s version. I never saw the remake. When he did all these monotonous chores, when in fact he was actually building the muscle memory for his karate. That's what we're doing here. Okay, now run the game. And I use the word game in the loosest of terms. And click the button. Great, we got a message on the screen. Okay, let's go back to our code. In our new method, add the following. We've just created a new variable. We don't need a public or private modifier inside a method. You'll learn why in a later episode. Now let's increase it by 10. Update the text. And run the game. we get 1,000. We've incremented our variable. You're going to do this a lot, so there is shorthand code for it. Back in the code, add the following. This is the same as the previous statement. It's just condensed. We can also subtract, multiply, or divide. There's nothing magical about the code. It's just shorthand to save you time. Now, if you want to increment just by one, you can use the postfix and prefix operators. Here we've incremented the strength stat by 1. And here we get our strength increment. That's the prefix. The postfix also increments the value. Here's a brain teaser. What will be printed on the screen? Take a moment to think about it. 
Now let's run it. Look at that, it's still 18. Now let's print out the strength. It's 19 now. Let's take a look at what's happening. Here our strength variable is set to 18. Then the value is assigned to the stat variable. After the assignment, the value is increased by one by way of the postfixed operator. Thus, the postfixed operator occurs after any operation. Let's take a look at this statement here. If strength was 18 in this case, the stat variable would then be 36. After that multiplication and assignment, the strength variable would be incremented to 19. If you are confused, welcome to the club. While the prefix operator is pretty easy to grasp, the postfix operator can be easily misunderstood. There have been so many bugs from misunderstanding their applications that they were removed entirely from the Swift programming language. Yet they are in wide use in C-sharp, so you need to know about them. My recommendation is to just use the plus equals operator and to avoid these operators when starting out. Personally, I avoid them entirely. Now let's play around with division. Take this code. Okay, guess the result. And yes, this is a trick question. When we run the code, we get 2, not 2.5. This is because integers do not contain any decimal information. It's just plain old numbers, baby. Any floating point information is dropped. Now we have the modulus operator. Let's change the division sign into the following. When we run the game, we get 1. Can you guess what this operator does? It returns the remainder of a division operation. 2 goes into 5 twice, and afterwards 1 is left over, and that's the result that the modulus operator returns. Uh, the modulus operator is commonly used to determine whether a number is even or odd. If the result is 0, you know you are working with an even number. So we've played with addition with numbers, but how about addition with strings? Let's try it out. Okay, so what's going to print out on the screen? I asked, pretending this isn't a trick question, but it totally is a trick question. Let's run it. We get the name printed out, but there is no space between it. We need to manually add it. Update your code to the following. Now, one important thing to keep in mind when working with operators is the order of operations. Chances are you haven't thought about it since school, but it's critical to your success. You'll often see images on social media declaring only geniuses can solve this, when in truth, it's just an order of operations question. Take this one. If you completely forgot about the order of operations, you may start on the left-hand side and work right. So in this case, you might answer 2. 3 minus 3 equals 0, times 6 is 0, then plus 2. But that's the wrong answer. Order of operation states parentheses, exponent, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So in this case, we start with 6 times 3. Now there's no other multiplication and division. Since addition and subtraction are on the same priority level, it doesn't matter which comes first, so we can start left and go right. 3 minus 18 equals negative 15, plus 2 equals negative 13. We can write the same thing in code.
Now let's run the game. And here's our result. Okay, technically that works, but people sometimes forget the order of operations. And also, it's confusing at a glance. Opt for simplicity over complexity. Whenever you find yourself getting too clever with code, remember that people don't play games for the code. They play games to have fun. Now, I might write a problem like this. Parentheses always goes first, so use parentheses to your advantage. Also, don't be afraid to break up complicated math into separate statements. It might not look too Cody or hacker elite, but again, we're opting for simplicity. By emphasizing clarity, your code is easier for other people to understand, but more importantly, it's easier for you to understand. Trust me, and this happens to me all the time. Months later, you'll be reviewing your own code and be pulling a Gandalf impression. This is why it's important for yourself and others to write clear code. Lastly, we have the cast operator. This converts types. Say you want to convert a float to an int. You simply provide the type you want to use in parentheses. This converts the integer 100 into a floating point number. Now, if you try to convert a larger type into a smaller type, you're going to lose data since a smaller type can't hold all the information of a larger type. The cast basically tells the compiler that you accept the data loss. In this case, we've converted a 32-bit number into an 8-bit number. Needless to say, a lot of data was lost. Okay, that concludes operators, but the fun is just beginning. For your challenge, I want you to create a tip calculator. Create a public field that is a bill total. Create another field that is a tip percentage. When the user presses the button, the total amount should be displayed on the screen. If you want to take this to the next level, create a new script called Tip Calculator and make sure to attach it to the text and connect the button. And now, as a hint, this task requires some casting. Pause the video now and try it out. Okay, we're back and ready to create a tip calculator. Believe it or not, this is your first actual program. Granted, it's a tiny one, but it's a good first step. Okay, first I get started by creating a script called tip calculator. I open the script, set it up, and add a new method. I add it to our text. First, I remove the My Operator script. 
Then I select the button. In the inspector, I add the text back to the on-click event. From the drop-down, I select my object and choose the Calculate Tip method. Then I switch back. Next, I create two variables. Okay, here's where the magic happens. First, we calculate the tip amount variable by multiplying the amount variable times the percentage variable. Since the percentage variable is a float, we need to convert the amount variable to a float as well, as we can't multiply a float with an integer. Next, we calculate the total amount. We do this by converting our tip amount variable to an integer and adding the amount variable. And that's it. Switch back to Unity. In the tip calculator, set the amount to 100. Now we get 120 as a total amount. Nice work. If you did something different, but it works, no worries at all. There's lots of ways to do the same thing. Just make sure to pat yourself on the back and say good job. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to click that like button. And also, if you want to be notified about more C Sharp videos, make sure to subscribe and enable your notifications. I'll see you in the next one.